In today's JavaScript question, we're going to deal with event delegation, also known as event propagation or event bubbling. You may have heard of it using one of these other names. I've seen all three terms used to refer to what we will be talking about. Perhaps you haven't heard of this at all, but these are the three terms that are used to talk about this feature of JavaScript. Now, first, let me explain what it is, and then we'll look at some examples. And here's what it is. When the event target of some event is a document or a document element, the event itself doesn't stop at that object. After the event handler is registered on that target element are invoked, most events bubble up the DOM tree to parents and grandparents. And those parents and grandparent elements can handle the same event. So handlers could be set up on those elements and those would be invoked as well. Now this provides an alternative way to register handlers on a lot of individual document elements. Instead of registering it on each individual element, you could register a handler on a parent element and handle the events at that level. This can provide a mechanism to solve a problem in a simpler fashion or better manage your code. So let's take a look at some examples of event delegation. Now to do that, I'm going to use this HTML page that I just moved to. Now this HTML page has some summary information about event delegation, event propagation. Some of these things we've already talked about, but there are some that are new. So let me go through those bullet items first, and then we'll use each of these bullet items as part of our example. So first off, we talked about the document events or document element events bubble up the DOM tree and trigger event handlers on parent or grandparent elements. We also mentioned that this is an alternative way to handle events. And it can be a great way to handle events in certain situations. Now, there are certain events that don't bubble up. And those are listed in bullet item three. Focus, blur, and scroll are events that don't bubble up through the DOM tree. Now, you can also stop events from bubbling up if you choose to. So if you handle an event on an element and you don't want it to bubble up through the DOM tree, you can call the stop propagation method that is part of the event object. So event represents the event object and then you call stop propagation to cancel the event bubbling. All right, let's take a look at some examples. I'm going to jump to Sublime to do that. First off, let's take a look at that HTML page. So if I'm looking inside the body, I have a div ID of content. I have the H1, and then I have another div with a class of bullets. And inside of that div is where I have the individual bullets, the LI tags, which are inside a UL tag. So I have four of them, and they each have their own ID, B1, B2, B3, B4. So that's the structure that we're working with. Now on the JavaScript file that's associated with this, I already have some event handlers created. I've added an event listener to each one of the li tags. So first I use get element by ID to grab the li tag using the ID. And then I add an event listener for the click event. I pass an anonymous function. And what that anonymous function is doing is it simply takes the event object which I've grabbed as a part of the anonymous function using the E as a parameter, gets the target, and then using class list, I toggle a CSS class named red text. And all that CSS class does is change the text to red. And I've done that for every single li tag. So if we take a look at how that works, I can click on these and they turn red. If I click again, they turn black again. So it's just toggling that CSS class. So that's four different event listeners I've had to create, one for each of the LI tags. 
well, how could I handle this using what we've just talked about with event delegation? How could I handle this on one of the parent elements? Well, let's take a look at that. And I'm going to use the div tag that is right here that has a class of bullets. This is really the grandparent of the li tags, but it doesn't matter as long as it's in the DOM tree hierarchy, I can handle it. So first off, I'm going to comment out these lines. Then I'm going to grab that div tag and I'll do that with document dot query selector. I'm going to use query selector to select this one and I'm going to pass in a CSS selector for the bullets class. So now that I've grabbed that div tag, I'm then going to add an event listener. And the event I want to add is click. And then I will pass an anonymous function. And I'll enter parameter E so we can grab the event object. Here's where I will enter my code for the anonymous function. Let me first put a semicolon at the end of that. Now what we want to do is basically the same thing I was doing in the other handlers that I created. Use the event object, grab the target. Now the target is going to be whatever li tag is clicked on. So once I have the target, I'm going to use class list again and toggle the red text class. It's really the same code because target allows me to designate whatever was clicked on. Let me go ahead and save that. Jump out, I'll refresh this page, and I'll see if it still works. Sure enough, same thing is happening. It's still working for us. All right, now let me jump back. Now what if I wanted to handle the event on one of the li tags and then also handle it on the div tag, on its grandparent. We could do that. So I'm going to copy this handler and I'll paste it in. This is for the fourth li tag. And I'm going to change this code just slightly. Instead of toggling the red text class, I'm going to toggle a class called larger font. And all this does is increase the font size. So now when I click on the fourth li tag, this handler will handle that click and then it will bubble up and the handler that's associated with the div tag will handle it as well. So let me save that. Let's refresh the page. Click on the fourth li and notice the text gets twice as large and it also changes red. Click it again and it goes back. So it's toggling both of those CSS classes and the others here are still working as well. Now we mentioned the stop propagation method of the event object. So if I wanted to stop the bubbling of the click event when the fourth li tag is clicked, I could do that by simply entering e dot stop propagation. Call the stop propagation method of the event object. That's what I'm doing there. I'll save that. Let's see how that works. We'll refresh. Now when I click on the fourth li tag, the text gets larger, but it does not change red because the, the setting of the red text class is handled by the div tag, which is farther up the DOM tree. Now these other li tags still work because I didn't stop the propagation on those. So those are still working. All right, let's take a look at one more thing. Let me comment out this one. Let's say you wanted to handle the event at an element that is higher up in the DOM tree, but you still wanted to be specific as to which elements you were going to do something with. Okay, so not everything that was clicked on, perhaps, you wanted to actually change the red text using our example that, that we're working with here. 
So how would we go about doing that? Well, of course, you'd use an if statement. So for example, if I wanted this to be executed only for the fourth li tag, I would do something like this. If e.target, so I'm going to address the target, and then I'm going to get the attribute ID of the target. And if that attribute is equal to before, then I will go ahead and execute the code. So this will allow me to specify that I only want this to happen on the fourth li tag. Now if I save that, let's go ahead and take a look. Refresh this. Now if I click on these other li tags, nothing happens. But if I click on the fourth, it turns red like it's supposed to. So thereby we're able to target a specific child element even though we had placed the handler on a parent element. So that is event propagation or event delegation or event bubbling, whichever term you prefer to use. Hopefully you found this helpful. If so, please like the video. If you would like to view other videos from our YouTube channel, you can click the video link that is found in the middle. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, click the circle link on the left. We have new videos each week. And to visit our website where we have courses on JavaScript and other resources, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.